at first when I'm carving the front side of a propeller, I don't cut this back side out right away. I leave it in there for strength so I can get after it, roughing out the front side of the blade. I have the first blade roughed out on the perimeter of it, just within an eighth inch or so. And now I am following the helical pitch. So I'm watching that thickness as I'm roughing this down. So the propeller turns this way. So this is the leading edge. I want the leading edge to reach the high point of the airflow about a third of the way back and then taper back towards the trailing edge. The other thing I'm doing is I am using these props as a reference to refresh my memory on carving props. This was the first folding prop I ever made, but this is a machine propeller from Superior Props. This is Society of Antique Modelers Legal. So Sam Legal, as long as it's the same diameter and pitch as what was on the original plane, came as a solid prop, but I had to do all the hinge work, the whipping. I also had to carve the airfoil and the um, profile of the prop. But I figured that was as good of a model as there is for these problem areas. Transition on both sides from the center hub at the hinge line and this shape which transitions from the center hub to the leading edge. It's kind of an area that can be a little bit challenging to picture if you've never carved a prop before. So I had that one first, and then I used that as a model for this one, for those areas. So that's why I'm sharing that because without that, I'm not sure what I would have came up with on my first attempt at carving a prop. This is the first folding prop I had on my Gollywalk. It's also from Superior Props, Sheen Blades. But it came like this with the center section and all the folder part of it done. I think I had to carve the airfoil and the profile it's the same diameter and pitch as this prop, but you have to make your own folder. Machine props are okay, but this, not Sam Legal. I have the backside of the prop cut out now. After I roughed in the front of both blades, Cutting down that angle here now roughs in the entire outline of my prop blades. I still have my reference lines where my center hub is and I have that 16th inch hole drilled through the center of the prop. So now I can continue to work the airfoil down, matching it to this pitch. I'll work the airfoil in at the same time. I'll work in the, to the outline. So she's starting to look like a propeller.
I've gotten closer to the line on the profile. I am getting these shapes showing up in the carving. Here is the transition the radius on the front side. Both blades going down to the high point. So this is the high point of the airfoil following the pitch. It's still quite thick, but <clears throat> roughing it in, bringing it all into focus, you might say. Already at this stage, it's not real far off as far as the balance goes. At this point, I am simply thinning the blades and I am following the pitch by feel, following this feel from the back side of the blade, taking the thickness down. Two hundred eighty thousandths. The thickness of this airfoil on this um, propeller template. I have both blades roughed down with my knife to less than a sixteenth of an inch away from the finished thickness of this airfoil. And because this is flat at any point along the backside. I can measure it with my veneers. I hold it 90 degrees to the center line of the prop. I can take measurements down the length of the blade to check the thickness. That's 320. Has to be square. 320. Three eighteen. This blade three twenty two. Three thirty one. Three thirty. Two eighty is right here. So that's fifty thou. Sixteenth would be sixty two thou. So I am about 40 to 50 thou away from my finished thickness verified with a veneer down the length of the blade what this does for me is it gives me an accurate reference point down the length of both blades when i'm carving and sanding the leading and trailing edge i can reference from the high point to the leading and trailing edge that I have accurately established along this pitch on the backside. The airfoil 
on the propeller template is an under cambered airfoil. And I am going to go with the flat bottom. I have serious doubts about how accurate I can establish the under camber versus the flat surface I have. And it's debatable as far as how much more efficient the under camber airfoil is anyway. So I'm staying with that. But this is where I struck a line and I was checking the thickness of this airfoil. So it's right around 280. Going to pencil line here with veneers. Um, so that's the thickness I'm going to be um, shooting for. At this point, I am done with the knife. Can't risk going any closer with a knife and gouging in and going too far. I've been using the shadow from the high point to get it uniform, taper down to the trailing edge and this radius up from the leading edge. So that works for this also. I took this to within less than an eighth of an inch on the trailing edge and the leading edge went down as far as I can and still leave enough material for a radius. And I still have a little bit to work with as far as my line that I drew on here with the um, propeller template. I also have to still take this out to the center hub and tapering up to here. I just left that extra in there for a little more strength while I was carving. But it's time for sandpaper. That nice uniform transitions down from the hub on the front side of the blade. The shape here, this transition from the center hub kind of creates itself. Needs to be a little thicker in there for strength from the center hub and hinges down to the blade. Time to start sanding. I saved all the shavings for you. An inspiration shot. Carve yourself a propeller.